All right, so here we are back at the Project Lawn. This is my first time seeing it uh, since last fall. And I'm gonna tell you what, I think it looks really good. Actually, it's much greener than all the other lawns around here that I'm seeing. You know, I mean, I don't, I mean, it's pretty obvious. You start treating a lawn, it's gonna stay a little bit greener longer. It's gonna green up a little faster in the spring and you can definitely see that that's what's going on here. But this is looking really good. You'll see, we got a few broadleaf weeds coming in already, right here. You can see where squirrels are in, digging around stuff. Looks like they're looking for nuts. You know, we are here in the middle of the woods, so nothing you can do about that. Definitely, here's some clover. Yeah, see? Early clover coming in already. Yeah, so you can see we are definitely gonna have a problem with clover this year, but there's no pre-emergent for that. So this is all part of being observant and knowing what you're gonna have to get up against here. Too early to spray for weeds, it's still too cold at night. So one of the quick things we do wanna talk about, we are gonna talk about pre-emergence here in a second, but one of the other things we wanna talk about is post-emergent weed control. You can see there are a few weeds coming in here already, but you don't wanna spray yet, it's too cold. It's getting well below 49 at night. And when that happens, the way these auxin herbicides work is they need to, and that's the ones we looked at at Home Depot, it's the same ones that you're gonna see pretty much anywhere for all cool, cool season grass, 2,4-D, dicamba, those are the main ones. For right now, it's too cold to spray for post-emergent weeds. The only reason we got those or did that trip and got that stuff was for when Jake, when he does his next app here, which is gonna be sometime when soil temperatures are around 65, approaching 70, he's gonna do the next app. Then he'll have some you know, weed control to use there. And it's the same one that we recommend in the book. But either way, what you wanna do this time of year right now is just see what's starting to come up. Just so you understand what areas you're gonna need to focus on, what areas you're gonna need to have challenges with. We do need to get some leaves out of here. This is super normal to have you know, leaf cover. You can see where the leaves have settled into like a low spot right there. We're gonna blow all this off. So that's one of the things that we've talked about before. Right now, there's no leaves on the trees. So we need to take advantage of all the sunlight we can get. We're already dappled in here without any leaves on the trees. So our job will be to, to accentuate this as much as we can. Let's, let's maximize the sun that we're getting by getting these leaves out of here this lawn I'm telling you it's in really good shape coming out of winter you'll see spots like this here this is where the snow has slid down and you can see where it's literally just dragged the soil see that see that soil's just been dragged through here and that'll create bare spots but these will these will fill in now this is the type of thing if you need to do seeding again in the fall, you could do that in here. But I'm telling you, I think this will this will strengthen up. This is some good Kentucky bluegrass in here and you can see it's muddled throughout there. That'll start to thicken up pretty good when you fur hard. And remember, on your first season, you're I you know, it's okay to throw down a little bit hard. It's okay to hit the lawn hard with the max rate of the Milo, which is 12 pounds per thousand going to give you 0.72 pounds of in it's okay to hit that hard every four or five weeks or so on your first year here and look we've even got a yard robin here if you live in the midwest chances are you have a yard robin that patrols your area and a property this size 14,000 square feet that we're treating he might have two or three but that's him he's the dominant robin he's not not wanting to have anything to do with me though there he goes it's also a great idea to do some light raking this time of year before you put your pre-emergent down. It's okay to rake after, again, light raking. But anything you do after you put your pre-emergent down can disturb the barrier that's there. It's a vapor barrier, so do as much raking as you can ahead of time. Any kind of spots that have snow mold that are flattened out, you know, kind of like this. We don't have too many bad spots here. In fact, we don't really have that many bad spots at all. This came out of winter beautifully, but this would be an example of an area things are matted down. You just, you know get that raked up and get some airflow in there. I don't have any better examples of that, but some of you might be dealing with snow mold, stuff like that. Just throw down some furt and let your, uh, let your airflow get in there. You'd be good. These areas along here, this is where we talked about where I didn't think things were gonna grow because there's just too much competition with the trees for sunlight, space in the soil, all of it. And we're on a slope right there. So it's like not gonna happen. So we're not gonna get grass in there and that's where we're gonna let it seek its own level I talk about. Wherever the grass does end up at the end of this year, that's where we're gonna recommend to the homeowner to go ahead and cut his beds in. But it's gonna give us a full year to see what we can get to grow in here and let it seek its own level.
taproot broke off. Fail. Okay, y'all, so today is Wednesday. I've been back now from Northwest India for a couple days, and what I wanna do is review the strategy right quick before we get going too far into this. The other thing is, I know I mentioned a couple weeds there, and I showed you a couple broadleaf weeds coming into the grill already. Those we're gonna attack later with what's called a post-emergent herbicide. It means we're gonna go after those after they've already emerged, but it's too cold to spray right now, because weed controls, especially the types that we recommend, those will not work when the temperatures at night are getting below 49, or during the day. It'll basically just stop the weed control from working, so it's too easy to go after that. I will put a link in the description below to show you the exact product we purchased to use for a later application. And the other thing is there's a ton of links in the description below. I know a lot of you guys get confused sometimes. It can seem like this is a daunting task and there's a lot to it. And I assure you, I've been doing this for so many years, I've answered a good majority of the questions that you already have. And all of the links are in the description below will answer a good majority of those questions. Tons of guides, tons of written research, tons of other videos that I've made, both recently this year and in previous years, as well as a podcast all kinds of stuff to answer. So make sure you check out the link in the description below, especially if you wanna get the Cool Season e-guide. I also have one for warm season. These guides serve as the basis or backbone for 10 years worth of the content that I've done here, and they also show you exactly what's going on in this video. So with that, let's go through now and look at the strategy that we performed for our round one application at the Project Lawn in St. John, Indiana. Okay, so with that, we are gonna do the most important thing, and that is to measure your lawn. If you don't do anything before you start any lawn program, before you pick anything to put on your lawn, you need to measure it to understand how big it is, because that's the basis of everything we do. Just so you guys know, we started this project in the fall, and uh, you can review all those videos. But here is our project map. Now, the first thing to understand is, is that this full side over here of the property, that's the house right there, there's a pool getting installed here, and you can see this in some of the video that I did. So we did not treat this half. So we are actually treating this area here. There's the front of the house, which we're calling section one, and we measured that off last year at 1,000 square feet. Section two there is 1,000. And then section three right here, this is like the main part of the hill down there and all around the side, that's 6,000. And then section four is what we're calling the back. This is the large back expanse area right here. That is 6,000 square feet. So total, all in all, we're working with 14,000 square feet. Now that's gonna be important when we start doing our applications. And then here's the strategy as it stands that we kind of set up here. This is our round one for a project lawn. So the first thing we did was clean up and we used uh, mostly backpack blowers for that. The idea here is to get rid of all of the leaves or at least 98% of them because leaves laying on the lawn blot out the sun and you can see as I blow leaves away there's a lot of thin spots or bare spots underneath those leaves where already the grass is thinned out from leaf cover now this particular home is in the middle of the woods so we're always going to have leaves but get out as many as you can so that's the first thing you want to do a little bit of light raking if you have some flat spots but nothing too hardcore but that's the first thing you do Second thing we did was put down an application of fertilizer. We use Melorganite, but you can use whatever you want. Mm, smells like success. Smells like success. We are using the 12 pounds per thousand rate. That comes right out of the e-guide. That's the first application we're doing, and we're putting it down at 12 pounds per thousand. The analysis on melorganite, this is called the analysis, is 640. That's 6% 6 nitrogen, 4% phosphorus, and there's no potassium or potash. But we care mostly about the nitrogen because that's what makes the lawn green, and that's what drives the majority of the growth. So this is a 6% nitrogen product. So just to reiterate, remember, melorganite is 6% nitrogen. That means it's 0.06, okay? So then that means 12 pounds per thousand, 12 times 0.06 is 0.72. That is just under three quarter pounds of nitrogen for every 1,000 square feet that we have out here, and we need 168 pounds yep. to get that done. I've told you that our application rate is 12 pounds per thousand. That's 12 pounds of melorganite going down on every 1,000 square foot of lawn space. So I had to know just how much to get in the beginning, and that's why I did this math. 14,000 square feet times our app rate of 12 pounds per thousand means I need 168 pounds of melorganite. So to begin with, we had to make sure that we had enough melorganite. These are 36 pound bags. Now you'll find some in new versions are in 32 pound bags, but that doesn't matter. You just need to know what you have. And what I needed was 168 pounds of melorganite base. So in a nutshell, I'm gonna take that 168 pounds of melorganite and I'm gonna use my spreader to get it evenly across all of these areas throughout the lawn here. Now I realize that some of you might already be saying, Alan, I'm super confused. Don't worry. Just make your way through this. Things are gonna open up to you. Things will start to become more clear 
the more you start reading, the more you start absorbing. The reason I do all this math is I want you to understand the why behind what you're doing. Why are we doing it this way? What results should we expect? And then how can you optimize it as you become more knowledgeable and as your strategy becomes more your own, you know, more optimized to your particular situation, your equipment, your lawn size, your budget, the availability of products in your area. I want you to be able to do all of that. I want you to be armed with knowledge so you can make better decisions instead of me just telling you what to throw down. Now, if that's what you want, fine. Go get Melorganite and throw it down at 12 pounds per thousand, pick up my guide and follow it step by step and you will do fine. But all during that process, you'll be learning enough so that later on down the road, you can make even better decisions for yourself. And that's really the idea here. stayed up there now I have to climb that hill again here I'll climb it you're gonna climb it oh yeah. thank god let me let me babysit you I'm kidding yeah do that <laughs> save me you gotta open it up first you might want to open it up I know but I want to get back up there So the final thing we're gonna do then is a pre-emergent application. And this first one up here in St. John, Indiana comes as soil temperatures are leading up to 55 degrees. Now, if you click the link in the description below, I'll give you a complete pre-emergent guide that walks you through this strategy in writing, as well as there's a blog post that I wrote a couple days ago that was sent out in our email list. We turned that into a blog post that will be linked below and that will help open up this strategy for you and also shed light on it, but we'll still go over it either way. Currently right now, I know that my actuals during the day are over 50 plus, and that's because I used an actual soil thermometer to measure, but you don't have to do that. Because what we also know is that historically, using the Greencast tool, historically, St. John, Indiana, their soil temps hit 55 degrees average around April 20th, right around that 420 mark. I knew that going in. So even when I'm clocking temperatures over 50 degrees, I know that April 20th is my optimum perfect day to apply my first application of prodiamine. Then all I had to do was look at what day was today. Well, we applied on March 29th. So between March 29th and April 20th are 22 days. So that's three weeks ahead. So whether I knew what I was actually clocking in my lawn or not, I knew that the day I was there was only three weeks ahead of the optimum date. And I will tell you right now, if you're three weeks ahead of your optimum date, you can throw down, your window is open. Now we did take actual readings and find out that at the peak of the day, we are definitely getting soil temps over 50. So that just reiterated what I already knew, which was that I'm three weeks ahead of the historical date and three weeks ahead is the very beginning opening of the window. Remember, if you know that your soil temps hit 55 in the soil on average April 20th, you can apply two to three weeks early and you can even apply two to three weeks late and you'll still be okay and good to go. It's never too late to put down prodiamine, at least as long as you're still in the spring. So, 50 pound bag, application rate. Application rate is three pounds per thousand. And this is a 50 pound bag. So 50 divided by three is 16.6. .6. This covers 16,600. We only need 42 pounds of it because we have 14 thousand square feet so 14 times 3 is 42 so 42 pounds going down this is going to be really different because you just put the melorganite down at 12 pounds per thousand this is going down at three this is going to feel like you're not putting anything down but you are you just have to realize the difference in 12 pounds per thousand on milo and three pounds per thousand on this it's going to feel really different
<laughs> I'm getting slower. I know. You're going uphill. <laughs> So I'm over here by Doc's. What do we call this place? Doc's Smokehouse. And it's snowing, so a lot of people ask me, Al, you put your pre-emergent down and it snowed. What happened? I don't know, it's just cold rain. We know that we're in our window and we're okay. So, it's just cold rain.